Mario Jones here. This is the myocardial toxicity of gentamicin following intravenous administration. Gentamicin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic that's used to treat bacterial infections. It is created by the genus of bacteria called Micromonospora. These are gram-positive aerobic bacteria that efflux this organic compound in an act of self-defense against encroaching gram-negative bacteria. In contrast to the antibiotics derived from the Streptomyces genus, which carry the suffix mycin with a Y, the antibiotics derived from Micromonospora carry the suffix mycin with an I. Gentamicin is an aminoglycoside. Aminoglycosides are organic compounds, or more specifically, amino-modified sugars. In this case, a trisaccharide with five amine groups. Gentamicin comes in seven types, all of which vary only in the specific structure of the circled prosthetic group. In the most widely used formulations, the C1 and C2 subtypes are the most prevalent, with only trace amounts of the other five constituents. With a molecular weight of 478 grams per mole, gentamicin is not too large to undergo simple transcellular diffusion, but with a log POW of negative 3.1, we can see that it might be too hydrophilic to cross plasma membranes unassisted. Gentamicin has exceptionally poor absorption across the lining of the gastrointestinal tract, so oral administration is not used. Instead, intravenous or intramuscular administration is used. I will focus on the intravenous administration of gentamicin, this allows the antibiotic directly into the bloodstream and gets around the trouble of crossing the gut epithelium. Once in systemic circulation, gentamicin can come into contact with any tissue. Gentamicin is polar and hydrophilic at physiological pH and an organic cation due to its high pKa but still it has minimal penetration into most tissues. In fact, many body tissues are considered to be gentamicin resistant. It however does display affinity for the kidneys and the lymph of the inner ear and tends to accumulate in these tissues when administered. Distribution to bone, synovial fluid, and peritoneal fluid is less prevalent, but still therapeutic concentrations are achievable. Although there is obvious possibility for phosphorylation, acetylation, and adenylation, these metabolic transformations do not occur in humans. In humans, gentamicin is not metabolized at all. These metabolic steps that are suggested, though, do happen in some bacteria, and they represent one route to bacterial resistance to gentamicin. In the bacteria that are able to phosphorylate, adenylylate, or acetylate gentamicin, at these points here, the molecule is inactivated. This is due to a change in shape that renders it unable to stop bacterial ribosomal activity. Gentamicin is excreted unmetabolized by glomerular filtration in short order. 99% is filtered through renal output and the majority can be recovered within one day. Further, the toxin has a 2-3 to three hour average half-life in the plasma of healthy individuals. The small amount that is not filtered through the glomerular filtrate is excreted in the bile. In order to truly understand the toxicity and the wonder that is gentamicin, we must explore the bacterial atomy of gentamicin. In bacteria, gentamicin is absorbed through proteins called porins. 
These are beta barrel proteins that act as pores through which molecules like sugars, ions, and amino acids can freely diffuse. They are present in the membranes of gram-negative bacteria, some gram-positive bacteria, and mitochondria. Due to the unicellular nature of bacteria, once gentamicin enters through a porin, no further distribution is necessary. In bacteria, gentamicin can undergo phosphorylation, adenylylation, or acetylation by bacterial and acetyltransferases, O-adenyltransferases, and O-phosphotransferases. Any of these actions will inactivate the molecule by rendering it unable to stop bacterial ribosomal activity. While bacteria can eliminate gentamicin, the hope here is that we will stop bacterial growth and have dead bacteria. If bacterial me metabolism is indeed unsuccessful, bacterial protein synthesis will be inhibited. Gentamicin inhibits bacterial protein synthesis by irreversibly binding to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome. At low concentration, gentamicin causes misreading of codons and impairs proofreading. This leads to production of nonsense proteins. At higher concentrations, gentamicin also interferes with amino acid polymerization and therefore interferes with peptide elongation. Specifically, gentamicin binds to four nucleotides in the 16S rRNA. The 16S rRNA is a component of the 30S subunit. Gentamicin also binds to one amino acid in the protein S12. S12 is another component of the 30S subunit. These two components are at the interface of the 30S and 50S subunits of the bacterial ribosome, and therefore are near the active sites. This region interacts with the wobble base in the anticodon tRNA, leading to interference with the initiation complex, misreading of mRNA, so incorrect amino acids are inserted, and breakup of polysomes. This leads to overall inhibition of bacterial protein synthesis, leaving the cell unable to thrive. By inhibiting bacterial growth, gentamicin acts to relieve bacterial infection, returning the human host back to healthy state. Gentamicin has no appreciable myocardial-specific toxicity. It does, however, have serious side effects and so should not be administered on a long-term basis. In fact, some sources recommend that administration should be stopped after just one day. The warning against long-term use is due to the acute nephrotoxicity of gentamicin. While most cells of the body do not have transporters for gentamicin, the cells of the brush border of the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephrons have proteins called megalin and cubulin that form an endocytic complex that transports gentamicin. The endocytic vesicles containing gentamicin locate to the lysosomes, Golgi, and endoplasmic reticulum. There, it binds to plasma membrane phospholipids, causing phospholipidosis. Gentamicin does this by blocking the negative charge that is crucial for the function of phospholipids. This effect builds up until a threshold is reached at which the endosomal membrane lyses and gentamicin is released into the cytosol. Here, it is able to interfere with mitochondrial protein synthesis in the same way that it does bacterial protein synthesis. Gentamicin not only inhibits protein synthesis, but also blocks proteasomal degradation of the pro-apoptotic proteins BACs and cathepsin, 
thereby inducing apoptosis. To summarize, gentamicin is an aminoglycoside antibiotic with poor transcellular diffusion, especially across the GI epithelium. Gentamicin works by inhibiting the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosome to stop protein synthesis. Gentamicin is highly nephrotoxic and can induce apoptosis by various mechanisms. Further, gentamicin is not cardiotoxic. Thank you.